What is going on everybody? My name is Dalton and I'm just some idiot with a wrench. And on today's episode of Poor Financial Decisions, we're dealing with the Ford. So this car has got a myriad of issues and I'm gonna try and solve at least one of them today. So let's buckle in, get ready and get to it. I'm gonna pop the hood and show you guys what I'm dealing with. All right, let me show you guys what we're dealing with here. So there are a ton of issues with this car. The first one that we're gonna tackle are the spark plug wires. I absolutely love these front dump headers. It is one of the only things about this car that I really love. And it's what drew me to it in the first place because you don't really see these old 65 galaxies hot rotted or rat rotted out like this. So with that being said, the person who did it, they shall remain nameless, did not really do a great job of setting the engine bay up to like support this kind of setup. Namely, they left the straight boot spark plug wires attached. You can see on that one really, really well that it's just kind of melted to the header, which is not really conducive for a good strong spark. And that's kind of what we need to run well. So I've been putting new wires on this car. I've done two already because I kind of wanted to get a hang of it before I picked the camera up and talk to you guys like I knew what I was doing. So what I've been doing is taking one wire at a time off the distributor and off of its associated spark plug and then grabbing a new wire from my stock over here. I got the cheapest set of over-the-counter wires I could get the same day at O'Reilly's which actually turned out to be Excel which is really cool and swapping them out that way. Now let me show you, let me put the camera down and then I'm gonna get kind of set up on how I'm gonna do this. You guys saw me pull the wire off that distributor. I'm just gonna pull it off the spark plug and then I'm kind of gonna get ready to start doing some of the harder stuff with the rest of this, with one of these wires. So give me one second. I'm gonna put the camera back down and I'm gonna pick it back up and then maybe you'll learn something. Okay, so I've went ahead and hooked up my new wire onto the plug that the old wire I'm replacing was occupying and then routed it through my little matrix of wire holders. And I've got it kind of laid over roughly where it needs to go on the distributor. Now, I'm doing this one wire at a time because I don't have like the distributor pattern memorized and I don't really don't really feel like pulling the cap. I know that the timing is good enough right now and I really don't want to introduce that variable while I'm changing another variable being the spark plugs. So that's why I'm doing one wire at a time. When I pulled the old wire, I took it over to my stock of new wires and I kind of held it alongside them as I held these guys up. And I found a wire that is approximately the same size, but just a little bit longer. That's the wire that I hooked up in the engine bay. Now, the cool thing about these Excel wires is they do not have an end terminal on them already. You have to cut them to the proper length or the length that you need for your application and then add your end boot yourself. So to do that, you're gonna need two tools. You're gonna need a really nice set of wire strippers. You could use like a cheapo set like these, but these really weren't cut in the bacon. So I borrowed slash was gifted these really nice like auto clicker dude things. And man, in the short time that I've used them, they have been absolutely amazing. So highly recommend a system like that, especially for something that's kind of sensitive like spark plug wires tend to be. The other thing you're gonna need are a set of dikes, and I'm not talking about those pair of ants that your mom never talks about in California, I'm talking about the, the choppy boys here. So let's cut our wire to size, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to get these 90 degree boots on the end of these wires, because they kinda suck, it's like hard. It is definitely not easy. So let me do some snip snips and get some of my stuff ready. And then we'll do the stuff and things. Okay, so I've got my wire cut. This is where it's going. If you notice, I got a reasonable amount of slack 
in my wires here, and that's not on accident. You want to have enough room to make mistakes. Um, not too much slack that the wires are gonna end up somewhere you don't want them to be, but if you have to cut it a couple times to get the boot on, it's better that than, you know, having to go get a whole new box of wires. But anyway, I'm rambling. This is where the hard part comes in. So their instructions, whenever this fucking plane's done, Excel's ins instructions say to strip the wire back to the carbide core um, and then throw it on the boot. The problem is we've got this 90 degree boot and you do need that little bit of wire without like a hard bit or anything like that to make a 90 degree through the boot. And it's harder to do that when the carbide core has been already been stripped and kind of hanging out. So take your lubricant of choice, mine is WD-40, and just lube the bitch up, right? I talked to your mom, she said, no amount of lube is too much lube. And the other thing, because I got roasted during one of my short videos, one of my reels or shorts or TikToks, whatever you want to call them. I do make short form content. Go check it out. I think I'm pretty funny. But in one of those videos, I got roasted in the comments about how WD-40 is not a lubricant. And look, it absolutely is. It is a lubricant with a bunch of solvents dissolved in it, or it's a solvent with a bunch of lubricant dissolved in it. Either way, it is a lubricant. It has lubricating properties period, full stop. You can fight me in the comments and tell me how wrong I am. Are there better lubricants out there than WD-40? Absolutely. Are there better penetrating oils? Yes. Are there better solvents? Yes. But can any of them do all three like WD can? I didn't think so. And before any of you say it, I do keep PB Blaster for breaking off rusty bolts, right? WD-40 is going to be the lubricant that I'm going to use for this. I've just found that it works better and I like the way it smells. So, with that rant out of the way, we need to go to the car, we need to get that boot onto that wire. Should be fun. All right. So you're just gonna take your cut wire, shove it through the boot. The end that you want towards the distributor cap is gonna go towards the end of the wire and just And if you're lucky, with enough brute force, it will decide to make this 90 degree turn on its own. Oh, she squirted. There it goes. So that is what it should look like after you've got it through or on top of the wire. Now that can be a massive pain in the ass. One of the things that can make it a bit easier are picks like this. All right, the camera died. So where was I? Ah, okay. So I got the boot on. This is what it should look like. And then I was coming over here and talking about how much of a bitch that is, and it is. But what can make it easier, besides using a very healthy amount of lube, are little picks like these two here, right? So this one's got a bit more of a 90 degree turn, and this one is a 90 degree turn. They are very sharp, and they will penetrate into that outer rubber insulation, which is okay-ish right now. Um, if you tear the end of that insulation up, trying to get it through the boot, like that's fine. Just understand that you might get to a point where you need to cut more off to get it through the boot. Or that it might, if you're not careful, nick the little carbide conductive core thing that all the lightning shoots through. Just understand that, right? A flathead screwdriver, like a really small flathead screwdriver can also help quite a bit. Just, just be careful, especially if you've already cut your wire a little bit too close and you might not be able to spin that dizzy to get all the timing and advance and all this, like the 150 horsepower these little Ford small blocks make back out of your wires. So 
that's it. That's all. I was, that's all I was gonna talk about. So, but now that we've got the boot on, we can actually strip it. Like that girl you went to high school with. And let's get ready to do our little tip thing. I don't, I don't have three hands, so I'm gonna strip the end of the wire, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that wire is stripped back, and man, let me tell you how amazing a device like this is. But here, if you can see that, that little bit of, well, it's like a bendy version of pencil lead is almost what it looks like. Excel calls that their superconductive core. It's basically a carbide sheathing over the actual copper wires or whatever kind of wires are spent sending your lightning down to your spark lighter things, right? That wants to be exposed. So we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna take this little doodobber guy so because we're using the 90 degree boots to get onto the distributor, we need the little 90 degree Ford things. These are different than the kind that Chevy uses. These are the Ford ones. I uh, had to redo a boot because I accidentally put a Chevy one on the Ford wire. It was a whole pain in the ass. So this is Editing Dalton here. Um, I'm actually, in retrospect, now that I'm editing this video, I'm not 100% sure if there is a difference between the spark wire connector to a Chevy or a Ford distributor. I just know that the first set of 90 degrees that I put on these wires did not want to work with the distributor. So we're, we're just gonna go with what I said here. The rest of this is still good information. So just wanted to hold myself accountable a little bit. That's all. But here's what they look like for this particular application. There are instructions in a lot of these boxes that tell you which ones to use where. Or you can brute force it like I did and get really frustrated and waste an hour doing a wire and then undoing it. it. The decision's really yours, the world's your oyster. But when you get ready to put these dudes on, make sure that you use the side that is very clearly blown out and expected to be crimped. Not the end that is already a really nice circle. This is your contact point that's gonna go down in the cap of your dizzy. Now, that fancy crimper tool won't do this. That's where you are gonna need your little cheapy dudes. Now, put my cheapy dude here. Now what we're gonna do is, we know that this carbide needs to make contact with this little copper piece that I just threw on the bow cover. We're, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this guy back so that it's laying back over the rubber insulation and put, the, put that carbide into the back of this little press sheath and then crimp it around it. So that no matter what happens, this guy, this little thing here, is in contact with that fucking plane. So that this guy is always in contact with the little carbide superconductor, go fast 8,000 black piece of pencil lead thing, right? So I can't, again, I've only got two arms. I haven't made the pilgrimage to Chernobyl to pick up my third yet. So let me throw this on the thing, right? And then really it's very simple after this, just crimp this down and then pull the boot over it. Be careful to not rip this off the wire, but just, you can just pull the boot up over and then drop it in the dizzy and then go on to the, to the next wire. That's it. Uh, that's all I'm gonna be doing for today because I am already losing light, uh, so I guess this is going to be my video for this week. A how-to on, I just threw that shit ass on the floor, a how-to on how to do spark wires. I really didn't think this was going to be a how-to video, but here we are. It is what it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I honestly really appreciate you guys. My videos have been getting a lot more views lately, and it's very heartwarming, right? uh really just means the world to me so if you've made it this far know that i truly do appreciate you hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day i will see you in the next one peace